Hi everyone, uh, it's Greg here and I want to talk about moving from Diocleat uh, to uh, Completion NVim. Uh, this is something I'm just currently experimenting with after using Diocleat for several years now and being quite happy with it. Uh, but one thing that it doesn't have, uh, which seems non-trivial to get working, is the ability to uh, show a preview of the API information uh, related to the completion that you currently have selected in the completion menu, like you can see here in their little demo. Uh, so last night I gave this a try and uh, it looks pretty promising to be honest. Um, so what I'm going to do uh, in this screencast is just give you a quick kind of try before you buy kind of demo of what it looks like. Um, I'm not going to show you how to set it up because it's explained pretty well I think in the documentation here. Um, I, will, I will show you what settings I have uh, but if you want to actually try it for yourself the way to go will be to uh, read the readme, I think. Um, so if you do that, you're going to need a couple things. You're obviously going to need the, this plugin itself. Um, you're also going to need the uh, NVIM LSP config uh, plugins. Uh, these are basically just a set of out of the box glue um, helpers to make uh, completion work well in a bunch of different languages. Um, and they're official, so they're under the NVIM org, so um, they're useful to and, and trustworthy, I guess you could say. So uh, let's let's dive into Vim and show what this thing looks like. Um, so, oops. So I'm going to start by just opening a file that has some kind of uh, LSP aware stuff in it. So here's a, a TypeScript file. Um, so nothing's really changed with respect to um, showing things like API information here. So that I hit my Shift K hover binding there to show that. So if I want to see what uh, this does, I can. That still um, appears in a floating window, but uh, where things get different now is uh, the auto-completion. Um, as you can see, um, let's go here. Uh, it works and it shows uh, API preview uh, in a floating window. So that, that's basically the missing feature that I wanted. Um, but everything just basically works. Uh, it works as well as uh, what I previously had. Um, so uh, one thing to note, for example, I've got some ulti snip snippets. They also work, so for example, if I do that, it knows about RLT snip snippets. Um, um, and it also shows something that uh, Diaplete didn't do for me. I don't know if it's just because I had it configured wrong or not. Um, you'll see here that it shows uh, parameter uh, hints when you're in the middle of uh, a function call. So that's not that's good as well. Um, now, my snippets have uh, basically tabs or kind of like placeholders where I could type something like a string scanner here. Um, and then I hit tab and I'll jump to the next one. Um, and then I can modify the file name. Um, so you'll see here that, uh, what am I looking for? Uh, yeah, file name completion works. Now I'm not actually sure if I have a string scanner in this, in this project, do I? I actually don't know where stuff is here, but um, just imagine I had a string scanner, I would be able to find it. Um, so yeah, file name completion works. Uh, I, kind of crude word in the buffer completion. I haven't actually tried that yet. So let's let's do something like that. Yeah, um, so it doesn't it doesn't auto complete. So for example, there I'm trying to I'm trying to find the word uh, underlying. Um, that pops up if I hit uh, control N. But otherwise, it's using purely LSP based auto completion. Um, so uh, one thing to bear in mind about this is uh, th the preview windows can be pretty big. Um, and that can be a little bit distracting. Um, let me find another one that was a good example. So this one here, um, or maybe not that read file. Let's go here to buy it to the usage site that I was at before. Um, so these are pretty big, right? So uh, they can get in the way a little bit and that, I don't know why that one didn't, didn't get dismissed. Let's try that again. Uh, so this is not auto completing right now. What's going on? Does not. Oh, because it's promises. Read file. So show me some info. One thing to bear in mind about this is because I'm screencasting, I've got the font set really large. Um, and in a real scenario, you're not going to necessarily have it set that large. Uh, so let's like make it a little bit smaller. So it's not quite as insane as uh, as it looks uh, in the in the screencast. So I think that's roughly where I had it. All right, so that's the demo of the thing in use. Let's look at uh, setup. Um, so, uh, yeah. Uh, mm, 
I'm just gonna dive down into it actually. So Vim pack bundle, where is it? What's it called again? Uh, completion something. Yeah, so in here, I, I have the plugin installed, uh, as you can see here under .vim pack bundle opt so that I can load it uh, at will and disable it at will from my VimRC. Um, but this is just a Git submodule, right? Um, likewise, um, you can see I've got a bunch of other plugins here that are all Git submodules. Um, the NVim LSP config is also a Git submodule. Um, and so basically in my VimRC, um, you'll see, let's find completion. Basically I have this pack add call um, to enable this plugin. Um, if I ever want to turn it off, I just comment it out um, and that'll go away. Um, so let's look at some of the options I've got set here. Um, so this one is the most complicated one, which I, to be honest, I'm not even really sure that I've got it set right, but basically you can get uh, completion NVIM to try different completions in order. Um, and you can manually skip between the, the completion sources uh, by hitting a hotkey, or you can have it fall back to the next one whenever it fails to find a match. So what I'm trying to do here, and I'm not sure if I'm doing it correctly, um, is you know, in the default case, we always try to get the completion from the LSP engine if there is one. Um, otherwise, we try to get it from the snippet. And so we saw that working in the other buffer where I was able to use ulti-snips ulti -snips snippets to complete. Um, the other thing that I've got here is um, I try to do path completion whenever uh, the uh, cursor is after a slash. So I think that's working, but I'm, I'm not totally sure. Um, these other two are just part of the default setting that you would get here. R really, this line here, um, this line here, which I'm going to delete just to make it clear. That's what the default looks like. And what I did was I, I added that line. And I'm not really sure what these two lines do. The other thing I did, obviously, was enable ulti-snips integration. Um, finally, I uh, changed the matching strategy to include substring matches and fuzzy matches, because without that, uh, it, this kind of thing wouldn't work. So, for example, I might do um, let G comp, comp trig um, and narrow it down to completion trigger character. But uh, without fuzzy, obviously that doesn't work, um, but it does with fuzzy. Um, so the other thing is trigger on delete. So for example, that would be something like, uh, just so um, I've got a, a value here. Um, by default, trigger on delete is off. So if you start hitting backwards, uh, you you don't actually get a completion menu. Um, in the readme, it says it's off by default because it can be annoying. But as far as I can tell, it's more annoying not to have it. So I've got it on. Um, so those are all the, the settings I've got. Um, then I've got, let's see what, uh, maybe not there. I've got to just remember where I've got this. Is it auto commands, auto complete? Yeah. So I've got some stuff set up here uh, that as far as I know, uh, not sure how much of it is still necessary. My ulti snips config uh, just remains exactly as it was before. Um, down here, I already had these three li uh, four lines uh, to control what happens uh, depending on uh, whether or not the pop-up menu is visible. Um, so I, I haven't tested whether any of these are still necessary, um, but uh, at least things seem to be working okay with them. Um, and the one that I added was this. Uh, and uh, that basically means that I can do stuff like, uh, let's see how smart this is. Yeah. So I can use tab to go through the list and shift tab to go back, back through the list. Um, so th there are those things. And um, then I think I've got some stuff under Lua, LSMP, is it here? Yeah, some stuff under the LSP config here. So the, the key point is, uh, well, actually I was going to say, but the key point is uh, when you attach to a buffer, you have to tell this thing to run. Um, and so the docs say that you can uh, basically call it in your own attached callbacks. Uh, so uh, basically, for example, uh, when I'm using a, a clang D powered autocomplete, I'm gonna call my own attached function. Uh, same when I'm using uh, the Lua LSP, um, and likewise a camel or reason um, and then TypeScript down here. So they all call this on attach uh, function, which is apparently not in this file, which seems wrong, but there it is. Um, and uh, one place you could put the, um, the initialization for the, the completion in then would be right here. So that it's always called whenever you attach, but I also want it to work uh, in buffers for which there is no LSP. Um, so I've actually put it somewhere else. So I think it's under order commands. There we go, yeah, so Winston auto commands. So do a, this thing here, buff enter. So this little, little Lua function is gonna get called every time I enter a buffer. And basically I added, I added this line here. Um, so it requires the, 
the completion plugin and just calls its own attach helper and it does some setup. I don't even know what it's doing, but you, you need to have this to make it work. Um, but as I said, um, in order to have this work in buffers that aren't necessarily LSP backed, like for example here, I've just got an empty text buffer. Um, I still want my completions to work. So uh, we, we have them working there basically. Um, so that's really all the setup I had to do as far as I know. Um, as I said, this is not intended to be a guide for you to set up this on your own machine because everyone's machine is different. You should just follow the steps in the readme. Um, but it's intended to illustrate uh, how, how little configuration you really need uh, to make this work. Um, so the only other setting that I recently made, which is not actually related specifically to this, it's only kind of tangentially related, um, is I turned on uh, um, transparency in the pop-up menu because I found that with, uh, you know, if, I'm, if I go back to a file where I have uh, some auto completion options again, um, let's get out of here again, let's go. If I'm looking through this, uh, it was a little bit overwhelming to have uh, not only the menu, but also the, the preview there. Um, and so I, I just wanted to make it a little more subtle. And to be honest, I probably want to tweak the colors a little bit more to make it more readable because this, this preview window doesn't necessarily stand out enough. Um, kind of run, it blurs in with all the other text. And I, I want to see if I can fix that. Uh, but basically, yeah, I wanted to turn on uh, a little bit of transparency in the pop-up menu. And so I don't know exactly when that was added to NeoVim, uh, but uh, you can do feature detection as always. Um, to see if something is there. So just switch uh, blend. So PUM blend, that stands for pop-up menu blend, value between zero and 100. 10 is like mostly opaque. 100 would be like totally transparent. Um, and then there's wind blend, which is for floating windows. So I've got that set to 10 for both. Um, and the other place I've got stuff happening is in my color callback. Uh, so basically um, I've got this auto command somewhere down here. Yeah. Um, I periodically check the color scheme for like various reasons for this function. Um, and one of the things this function does is just tweak the colors a little bit um, to make sure everything's right. Um, so P menu cell, there we go. Um, basically um, you can add this blend value to um, set the transparency of the selected line in the autocomplete. Um, so for example, if I go here, um, you'll notice that the, the line that's currently selected is fully opaque and that's because I set blend to zero for the P menu cell group. Um, and as I commented earlier, a bit of uh, feature detection just to make sure that um, it actually works. Uh, what did I do here? Yeah, uh, make sure it's actually available even before you call it. Um, so I think those are all the things uh, to talk about here. So if you're interested in trying this plugin out, like I say, check out the README. Um, I will put links to it in the description. Um, and I hope that's useful. Uh, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.